What's up, everybody? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Good yeah. evening. Getting ready for the rain to come in, aren't we? Yeah, man. Looks like dang near two weeks straight. Yes, I have uh, noticed that as well. It's um, I've been beating myself up all week for not cutting hay. I guess it rained Saturday, and Sunday it was real nice. I was like, I could have cut some on Sunday. You got some hay ready to cut? Yeah, I've got I've got a fair bit ready to cut now because I've got some fescue and some ryegrass, and uh, I'd kind of been thinking ah, it's about ready, and then yeah, now I'm looking at the forecast. The ryegrass is, you know, going to seed, which ideally you want to cut it before it puts out a seed head. And uh, we've got what two straight weeks of rain. It's like there's a day or two where it's like a 25 percent chance, and otherwise it's like 50 to 60. Yeah. Uh, every single day in the two week which that that annoys the piss out of me which maybe it will rain every day but i feel like when they put that 50 percent on there they're just like ah yeah you know could happen flip a coin you know yep. literally flip a coin it might rain it might not yet you guys figure it out because yep. we can't help help you that's a 50 percent chance it will and it's a 50 percent chance it won't like that's yeah. What, but yeah I, I don't know well that's why today i got done with my corn I got it planted. I ran and planted my sweet corn patch, got it done. And uh, I wish that I would have had about 300 acres of beans already planted too. But I've got uh, got to swap over to beans and start trying to get them going. Uh, the forecast holds you have plenty of time to get it swapped over. I know. The only bad thing is, like, I'm... I want to swap it over, but I'm going to wait a little bit because I want to make sure that it's going to come up. Cause right, I, right. Be sure you, yeah. you get a stand on everything. Because that's what I got to thinking. I was like, well, I can go ahead and swap the planter over. And then I'm like, well, hell, if it rains as much as they do, some of the spots were so heavy that I was planting in. I mean, I ran through some mud today. I don't know how I made it through there. I mean, it was it was a miracle. And uh, oh, 8420, it's a, it's a mud hog, man. That thing will go. I put Which I put new tires on it this year. Just not front yeah. tires, but them new rear tires. I got to say, man, them jokers, they clawed on through there. I think they're Maxims. That's what the brand. Yeah. It, uh, so, you, so you got your sweet corn. What uh, what about your other vegetable crops? What, what's the timeline on them? I don't know. This year, we're going to kind of just probably stick to the sweet corn and the pumpkins. Um, now, I'll plant the pumpkins in June, about the first week of June. But uh, I don't know that we're going to get too creative since we're trying to get, like, he's actually, he just got moved out there and he started, he has made the pad for the shop. And uh, they're supposed to deliver it May 22nd. So that's in motion. That's been the biggest thing. My main thing this year is to get the shop there, kind of get it established, and then we'll, we'll move forward with that. So it's... I don't know. You know, I plan eventually to have like some strawberries and maybe go even some, some purple hole peas and kind of branch out, maybe some tobacco and do our own cigars. There you go. <laughs> yeah. You know, tobacco's big and, and, or at least it was at one time, you get in the middle in East Tennessee. Um, I think it's time. still really big in Kentucky, ain't it? Don't they do a lot of Man, tobacco? A lot of it. I, I'm so far from an expert in tobacco. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure that at some point there was probably some grown somewhere around here, but it was never a big deal. But like when I went to college and you know I had a bunch of buddies that were from Middle and East Tennessee, like that was a big deal. Which, you know, an acre of tobacco is a bunch of tobacco, and and some of these boys have four or five acres like that is massive. How do they plant it? Um, it was all by hand. I'm pretty sure. Have you seen the seeds? Do you remember when Dad and I grew some? Yeah. Do you remember that? So yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they start them all out indoors or in a greenhouse. Um, Oh, they, and then it, oh, well, then you could plant them like with my water wheel transplanter. Probably, but it's super labor intensive. Yeah, like um, I think especially a lot of the big outfits would have like a lot of H two A workers and yeah, are just straight up illegals because <laughs> um, it's super labor intensive. But um, still a bunch of tobacco barns. Like you get over in the middle Tennessee, like where my wife's from, tobacco barns everywhere. Yeah, um, but. And I don't know if it's, because it, obviously you don't need a huge area because you don't, 
you know, just a few acres is a lot. Yeah. And of course their, their terrain doesn't allow for like big ag row crop, you know, even in just middle Tennessee, any, yeah. any corn and soybeans, you know, it's kind of limited to a lot of their creek bottom, river bottom ground. Um, Cause it, they get real rocky real quick, you know, in any other hill ground and whatnot. But I don't know if that was the reason why, or if there were other logistical reasons why tobacco was so much more popular there than here. But um, yeah, I don't even know where we're going with that. But well, dude, it, I just remember I ordered some tobacco seed because Dad and I were talking. We're like, we're gonna grow our own. I don't even remember if I was, I may have been still dipping at the time. I don't remember. But uh, we were like, we'll grow our own. And so I ordered it. Dude, I can't get it. I mean, the seed was the size of a piece of pepper. Like, they yeah. were tiny. And then Dad and I, I mean, we didn't know anything about it. and But we planted it. And it got like six foot tall. And the well, leaves are huge. Well, and they would, them boys, they, talk, they'd be setting tobacco, chopping tobacco. I think they have to top it. Like, Oh, yeah. There was all kind of, we Because we, we had considered, like, we were like, we're going to try to make some chewing tobacco just for ourselves out here. And that's what dad was like, well, we're supposed to like pluck the blooms. You know, it was like all kinds of stuff. And, well, and they, we didn't. And and I remember they would always talk about burly and then like dark fire. And like, again, if anybody's listening that knows anything about tobacco, they, I'm butchering this, I know. But, you know, of course they would then hang it in the barn. And, and I don't know, you know, like they dry it. And it seemed like, Cause yeah, I would always be you know interested in telling them boys, and like a lot of what they were growing, it seemed like it was just like the wrapper for for um, cigars. cigars. Yeah. Like it wasn't even. I mean, obviously that, that is consumed, but yeah, it's not even the type of tobacco that would necessarily be put into, you know, snuff or chewing tobacco. Red or man. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We got the red man hat, but it um, uh, I, I, uh, they're uh. I read a really interesting article one time from a guy. It was actually, I heard him interviewed on a podcast. Um, I'm not going to be able to think of his name, but it was about insurance fraud in the tobacco industry. It was incredible. Like they all, they could make a movie about that story. Really? Like, you know, and I don't know why tobacco is right for that sort of thing, but cause of course there's guys, you know, commit insurance fraud on it with all kinds of crops but oh yeah you know they would like claim a total loss on a tobacco crop but then i guess because it, it's easy to sell on the black market you know they would have these buyers that were buying so these. they were getting double paid for it oh yeah yeah they were i, I think that was kind of the gist of it and uh oh it was it was it was crazy like undercover <laughs> uh, you know agents and but anyway i uh, i hate to give all that teaser and then tell you that I, don't, I can't even think of the guy's name. It's Chris is his first name, but um, I think he writes for uh, one of the big ag publications. But yeah. um, incredibly good storyteller, and um, huh. it was a story. I mean, it, it had to have taken him months to. Well, we'll to, have to, to try to. We'll story. have to research it and find that out. That'd be interesting. Um, I'll put the. He, he's been on with. I, I know he's been on with Vance Crow. He may have even been on with Sharky before, but I, I know Vance Crow. But anyway. Um, yeah, that, that was a very intriguing, huh. and it's a long article. Like, you know, sit down. It might, like, it's not one that you read in two or three minutes. But well, anyway, that, that's that's about all I know about tobacco. Yeah, I, I do like to chew every now and then, just for the hell of it. I um, haven't, man. I, I, you know, I used to dip. I miss. Well, I just still buying miss it. a pack of chewing tobacco. It's not hard to find, but like used to. I remember like 10, 15 years ago, you could walk in any gas station. And buy a pack of chewing tobacco. And like every now and then I'll get a wild hair because I don't chew regularly. I'll be like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on fence. I'm going to chew some tobacco. Yeah. And like the store will be like, they'll like pull like a box out. It's like a half inch like, dust on it. They're like, you have blow in the dust. The last, the last I bought, they were just like, uh, you can have it. Yeah. They, they were pretty much like, <laughs> I can't actually sell you this. Like, yeah, we I didn't even know we had this over here. <laughs> They're like, pull the pack of rat poison out of it before you you chew it. Don't. Um, but yeah, I, I guess like dipping tobacco, like Copenhagen. And oh shit, dip is still. huge, man. Now, have you seen, there's like all kinds, I'm, since I haven't dipped in so long, I'm out of the loop, but it's all kinds of weird dips and stuff. Rene, renegade and what is this, ziz or, there's like some weird yeah, I wouldn't know, but I bought, a lot of times like if I'm on a road trip and I'm trying to stay awake, like I'll put a 
I like I'll we'll stop and get fuel and I'll put a chew of tobacco in. Remember the last time I bought some too, other than the one that they ended up giving me because it was so old. <laughs> God dang, it was like ten dollars a pack or something. Dang. I mean, it may not have been quite that high, but it was. I remember thinking, like, dear Lord, I'm glad I don't actually have a habit of doing this. Man, I, you know, I was a Copenhagen wintergreen man when I quit. I was dipping, I dipped a can a day. I could just damn near eat that stuff. I loved it. I'm th- I wish I had one right now just thinking about it. But, um, man, I'll never forget I quit and six months had gone by. Did I tell you, Drew, about me and Drew riding in the river bottom? Have I ever told you about that? No. Man. I had been quit for like six months and it was the hardest thing. Quitting dipping was super hard for me. Um, cause I'm, I mean, especially farming and stuff like that. All I'm around is people putting in dips and chews oh, yeah. all day. Yeah. And like, it's to the point, like your mouth would water. Like if you saw somebody pull a can of dip out, you'd be like, man, my eyes would get big. But, uh, we rode to the river bottom. Drew was in town from college. And so we ran. Drew, Drew is my younger <clears throat> brother. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I forget. I need to elaborate on some Drew's stuff. Drew's halfway between mine and Logan's age. So yep. Yeah. Yep. So he was home from college. Uh, you were probably, I guess you'd have been in Knoxville at the yeah, time. Yeah, I'd have been in vet school if he was in college, yeah. Yep. So <laughs> we ride to the river bottom, and he pulls out. I think he had a can of Copenhagen wintergreen as well. And, man, I was like, as soon as the smell, I smell, I said, man, I said, let me get a pinch. And he goes, I thought you quit. And I said, well, I quit. Yeah. And he goes, man, I, I, you know, you, I don't want you to start back. And I said, well, I don't quit once. I'll quit again. Like the famous line. But he was like, all right. So I, I got a pinch and I put in, man, when I was dipping in the prime, I would put in, I was one of them, man, I'd put a fat pinch in. Well, I put a pretty big pinch in and, oh, dude, for 10 minutes, like we rode through the bottoms, man, shit, I felt awesome. I was like, man, this is why I like doing this so much. And then, like, I started to turn the page a little bit, and I put the dip out. But I was, man, I mean, I had dipped for years, so I knew it was too late when you start to feel bad. Yeah. Like, it don't matter. Hell, I should have just left the dip in at that point. And so I was like, well, all right, man, I guess I'll get you home. And uh, so I, I dropped him off, I guess probably at your parents' And I had to stop at Double Bridges, and I puked my brains out. Like, I was like, I was just fighting the vomit back, like, while I was taking him home. And I got him home, and, yeah, literally, like, I couldn't even make it to my house. I had to puke. And, whoo, man, that is the worst. Like, nicotine sickness. Oh, Oh, I agree. I never could dip tobacco. It it was, like, and I did it for a little while, but, like, I never – like, I had gotten sick on it the first few times, and I just never could. But for some reason, chewing tobacco. I don't think it's got as much nicotine in it. I can. I mean, I could chew tobacco. I could chew tobacco and drink while, mm-hmm. I, while I got a chew in. Like, it's just, it's different. Yeah. Um, but it's funny you say that. I, I'm re- The book I'm reading right now, I'll give it a shout out. Um, it's called, it's The Filthy 13, and it's the story of the dirty dozen yeah um, paratroopers from world war ii and um it's like co-authored um but but jake mcneese is uh he was kind of he was like the leader of the group and uh he was a big copenhagen guy all right and when they uh when they first jumped in at normandy um he had some packed like i think he like uh, left some of his food rations behind so he could take Extra, copenhagen yeah. with him but yeah. it got ruined because they ended up like landing in these um fields that were flooded and and so i think he said he went 36 days but whenever they finally got back to england after whatever but it been 36 days and he had several care packages from home from like different family members and every one of them had some copenhagen in it Get so sick the first one he put in yep got, got sick as a dog <laughs> But, oh uh, man! But I think he he got sick that one good time and just got right back on that horse. And well, that's what you're supposed to do, you know. I'm. It's funny, you know. I started. Well, they, weren't, they weren't worried about quitting, like because they all. I mean, most of them did not come back. Yeah, um, I think yeah. actually in their original jump when they went in at Normandy, and I may get this wrong because I'm, I'm right about that point in the book where they obviously they made it back. So he's, you know, could tell that story, but uh, he did. I think of the original. 12 or 13 of them, like only three or four came back. Oh, dang. And then, so then they had to rebuild them 
and then I'm that's as far as I am right now. But yeah, I think they make several more jumps into Europe. Well, that's that's what was so weird for me. Like I started dipping when I was 13 years old, and a dude used to bring a bunch of dip to my dad's shop, and there would be Grizzly. He worked for like Grizzly or whatever the company, American Smokeless, and he would bring Levi Garrett extra. Uh, some bags because some of the mechanics back here would chew it. He'd bring this god awful grizzly natural, which is what dad would dip, and it was also fine cut. But he would always have some grizzly wintergreen in the mix. None of them liked wintergreen, so hell, I just man, I'd slip some cans of that wintergreen out, and because uh, they ended up would just they just throw it away, and uh, it was long cut grizzly wintergreen. Hell, I started dipping that when I was 13 years old, and I never got sick. But I do remember one summer, man, and I mean, I had to hide it from my mom. Uh, like, you know, she would try to sneaky catch me. She always thought she knew, but I always would kind of like dodge, dodge she, anything. She well, she, <laughs> she confronted me one time. I was like 17. She came upstairs right before I was getting ready to go to school, and I would hide it up in my nightstand and she was like being real weird waking me up for school and she goes where's you where's your uh skull at and uh i was like i don't i don't have any skull and i was not lying to well, her i was say that's true <laughs> yeah it was grizzly and uh it was and so she's like i know you've been you've been dipping uh dipping and i'm like i don't, I don't have any skull and uh i mean i never was a skull man and uh but I always, just one summer, I do remember, man, I went on like a dipping spree. I guess mom was at work and I didn't have anything to do. And so I just kept putting dips in and it did get me that day. Like <laughs> I remember I just went and had, I just laid on the couch for several hours. Like that nicotine sickness, it's not much else as bad as that. Yeah. Like I said, I, I've, I've been there. Um, I tried some fake dip called black Buffalo last year or the year before last. I can't remember. Because on the combine is when I, I miss a dip. Well, I bought this stuff called Black Buffalo. I ordered it online. It is about the closest thing to dip that I've ever had that wasn't tobacco. Well, they have some that's non-nicotine. Well, I ordered it, and then they have some that's got the nicotine in it. <clears throat> oh, here's some cats fighting out there. Well, I ordered the nicotine one, too. Man, I I was dipping the nicotine one while I was cutting some beans, and shit, it got me. Like, that that kind of got me. I, I felt bad. I felt bad for, like, a day. And so I was like, man, this this just ain't worth it <laughs> like to feel this bad. So I don't know that I'll tinker much with it anymore. I got bit just too many times. Yeah, but I felt uh, so betrayed the time I was with Drew, because, man, I'm telling you, dude, I, I bet you money I could have eaten a can of Copenhagen when I quit dipping. Like, Yeah, I, it just never was it for me. And, like, a bunch of my buddies would do it, and I would – but I, and I would always, you know, if I'd have one in for a few minutes, I could tell. I was like, yeah. It's like I need, I need to spit this out before I get to the point of no return. <laughs> yeah. But, well, you got a short window in there. Like, I remember I did Blake Tickle. His, his dad works for me, Mr. Cookie, but – Blake, uh, he, <laughs> it was me and him and like one other guy, we were riding around and I had a can of that Grizzly Natural in the truck and I was like, get you a pinch of that and to Blake. He tried it and man, he got sick as shit and we were laughing. I think it was me and Brandon and Blake and we had to pull over and he was like puking on the sidewalk and, but Blake, man, I'll never forget. He was puking and we were all laughing and he was like in the middle of puking and he was still like, <laughs> Like he felt shitty and was puking, but he was laughing his ass off. He was a trooper about it. <laughs> he was, man. He was. So, um, well, that's our tobacco escapade. I did. Did you ever smoke? You ever big much of a smoker? Man, like when I was in college, like we were, we would get to where, like when we would go out drinking, you know, which was, I mean, no, we were in college. Yeah. Like a bunch, and none of us were smokers. Yeah. Um, like I can think. I had maybe one buddy that was a smoker, but like, oh hell, that's what we would always, we would always joke. Like you'd wake up the next morning and, and uh, we'd say it was like a little leprechaun in the middle of the night 
came in your room and took a shit in your mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yes. You wake up next morning you're like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. I don't know how people do this. That's like, what I always wondered. The taste a, is awful. What was your what was your cigarettes of, of taste? Uh, we, we would go to the store and buy, like, the cheap shit that would be, like, in the basket just sitting on the counter. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think at one point, one of the grocery stores, they were, like, a dollar a pack. They were, like, called Tough Guys. Tough Guys. <laughs> <laughs> they would buy that. <laughs> you know, shit like that. But it, yeah, it was it was it was purely like you know we, we were gonna be drinking, so we yeah. we'd smoke a bunch of cigarettes. That was I wonder why that is. Back, back when you could smoke in a bar, yeah. Which I guess now because those bars you had to be twenty one to get in, as long as it's somewhere like that. But hell, I remember like as a kid, I'm old enough. Remember when restaurants had smoking sections and non smoking? Yeah, and uh, yeah, you don't see that at all anymore. And like as a kid, like cigarette smoke would tear me up. Oh, yeah. no, it, well, it's illegal in Tennessee anyway. Really? Like, you can't smoke indoors. and Yeah. Um, wow. Unless it's like a bar where you got to be 21 up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, I saw, you know, there's all these accounts on social media where, you know, kids today won't know what this is. And it was a McDonald's ashtray. <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, and I remember them because every time you go to McDonald's, they were like, really cheap aluminum they were soft you yeah. have even done this yeah you could like smash them and like <laughs> you know mold them around fold them yeah it's like oh yeah i remember as a kid like you always smashed them i didn't realize that <laughs> it was, it was illegal, aluminum though dang because i remember smoking sections but i well, mean we never I, sat it, in one been, it might have been 20 years now but i remember when it got passed that dang you couldn't the only way you could smoke like indoors in Tennessee, like in a business, as if it's a place that's twenty one plus, huh. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. You yeah. used to for all you young kids out there, you go to like any sit down restaurant, and when you would go up to the hostess, you would she, you would say smoking non or first available, and if you wanted to get seated quickly, you'd say first available. But you might end up in smoking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or I remember my, my mom would always get pissed because like when I was little, like it literally would like. Like, I don't know if I was allergic to it or what, but it would, I didn't have asthma, but um, you, you'd pick non-smoking, but you'd be like at the table right next to the smoking section. So was, <laughs> like you could barely see the people across the table from you. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. But, uh, hey, King of the Hill, did you ever watch it much? I, I'm familiar with it, but no, I was never Man, a regular viewer. I love it. I've watched it all the way through a couple of times, but. They had one where they start smoking again. Now, apparently, Peggy and Hank used to smoke, and they uh, they get into smoking because Hank catches Bobby like slipping a cigarette one time, and he makes him smoke the whole carton. Yeah. Makes him real sick, but he also makes him addicted to smoking. <laughs> but um, he has one pack that he forgot to smoke, so him and Peggy start smoking, and they go to a restaurant, and they go to this place, and I don't remember what it's called, but. Uh, they go in, I think it's called Smokies, and they walk in, and man, everybody's like hip and young and nice looking, and they're like, smoking or non-smoking? And they go, we want the smoking section. They're like, right this way. And so they walk through the crowd of all these people, and they go into this other room, and when they walk in, you can see the smoke, and everyone's like, <laughs> you know, they're like coughing their lungs out, and they look like death, and they're like, oh, geez, and Hank turns around and he's like, where is old Smokey, by the way? And the woman's like, oh, yeah, he, he died five years ago. Like, you know, like, it's funny. They're kind of making fun of how unhealthy all the smokers are. Well, and and I feel like, obviously, I guess there's still kind of a little bit of a hip or cool or rebellious element smoking. But, I mean, I'll be 40 here in a little over a month. and And I feel like, 20 years ago like it was still like like smoking was cool oh like, yeah man yeah na nowadays like it's so like i even find myself like because I, I don't know hardly any people that are healthy that smokers. Smoke. well or just that are regular smokers anymore yeah. like like used to like it was and it, and it wasn't now it's like almost taboo like you're like oh you're a smoker <laughs> like like the, which i mean Obviously, we know the, the health hazards of it. So, uh, well, that's it, my it, thing. It's probably a relatively good thing, but it, yeah, it, it, I feel like they really flipped the narrative on that yeah. pretty quickly. Well, that, it definitely was. I mean, when I was, when I was, I mean, oh, look, I, I'm just not like I'm going to go to jail here. I, I did some underage drinking and some underage smoking, and I always wanted the cowboy killers, man. I had a guy when he'd Marble pick them up, Marble yeah. Reds. I'm like, 
hell, I want the baddest sons of bitches I can get. And so I'd get the reds. and Back when you could drink a Budweiser and not be gay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I would. I'd drink the steak in a can. You know, I'd That's, get the Bud heavy. Well, yeah, but, uh, oh, well, that's when I was, yeah, like in high school, I was like, well, just say it. Yeah. When you well, were in high school, what, like you would drink, I was like <laughs> light beer. That's like drinking diet Coke. Yeah. Like, like at least in my opinion, so yep. we would always get the bud heavies. Well, but, that's, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm the same way. Like now it's, you don't see a lot of smokers. Um, I mean, obviously there's still smokers out there, but dude, I just, I smoking, Man, if we got some listeners that are out there and you're a big smoker, look, if you got to have a vice, get to dipping or chewing because smoking is just, damn, it's terrible for you. Well, like, I, like in college and all, like with girls, like, oh, man. I, I oh, that's the kiss of death oh, if a chick is like, a smoker. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave some things left to say. But, yeah, yeah, it was like it, it was a turnoff. Yeah. Um, but, um Oh, dude, yeah, I mean, it absolutely was. Yeah, like, you don't... There was chicks whenever I was, like... There was a lot of party girls, and I'll leave yep. it that, that would smoke, and so... Yeah, but... They were not even on my radar. <laughs> if I saw them smoking, like, all right... Well, I'd say, like, we, we would smoke we were drinking, so, you know, under those scenarios, but it's like... Like, it's, it's saying, I, I don't want to be kissing that mouth... No. Uh, you know, every day for the rest of my you life. You would have yeah. to be a... Sm- I don't know how non-smokers can be with smokers. You probably get used to it, just like yeah, anything else. But I like to smoke a cigar every now and then. And I, I I have gotten where I will do that on occasion. Um, I got a pipe over there. You ever smoke pipe much? I, I don't Some think crack? I ever. You ever done a crack? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hunter Biden's our guest. He's going to be here in just a minute. Yes, we're going to get uh, tuned up. No, I never have. Um, Man, it's I, I smoked the hell out of some cigars last October. Oh, yeah, you did over the, the victory. Yeah, baby. Third Saturday in October. Well, okay. that was – the pipe is smooth. You have to try the pipe sometime. It's real smooth smoke. Okay. Um, I don't – yeah. Um. All right. Well, that's been a, that has been a, a whole episode about tobacco. Yeah. Our, we, our younger days of having more vices than just alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, we do got to – I, and I did finally find it, and, and I apologize to Mitch. Um, oh, yeah, the question? Yeah, he asked a question, um, actually on one of our YouTube videos, one of our previous ones. So we appreciate everybody. We appreciate you listening wherever you listen to the podcast. Yeah. We appreciate you watching if you're on YouTube, um, giving us a thumbs up and whatnot if you're there. But he had asked um, in regards to, uh, and he specifically said on summer pasture grazing, do you prefer annuals or perennials? Um, of course, I told him, I was like, man, that's, that could be a long answer. We'll, we'll probably answer that one, you know, on a, on a future podcast. So here we are. Um, I have done a fair bit of both. Um, it, I, it, at one time, I thought that I was really going to get more into the, uh, the annual thing. Because the, the whole idea, I guess, behind annuals is, um, I kind of thought of it as, they ain't here for a long time. They're here for a good time. Yeah. You know, and, and for those of you that, you know, I think most of you probably don't understand the difference between an annual and a perennial. Annual, you have to. Um, well, let's explain it. Yeah. Yeah. You have to plant every year. Like it, it, you know, it's not like um, Bermuda grass or fescue. Um, you know, it, it essentially has to be planted. Now we do have some annuals that do come back every year because, you know, they put out seed. Um, I guess when you're, talking about warm season grasses crabgrass is probably one around here which most people fight in their yard which it's actually it is an excellent forage um and one of the reasons we don't like it in our nice bermuda grass yards is it grows so dang fast yeah your bermuda you can go a week without mowing but if you got a bunch of crabgrass out there you need to mow like every three days yeah but um i i have gotten to where I mean, it's obviously a little more labor intensive with the annuals because you're having to, you know, even if you're no-tilling them in, you're having you're still having to plant them. And I didn't have a lot of luck with no-tilling them, um, but I experimented with some millet, um, some Sudex or sorghum sedan grass, um, and we would usually, of course, mix in a legume, whether it be a 
sun hemp or some form of peas. Well, on the note, what kind of were you using? What kind of planter were you no tilling? I was I was using that um what that like big. It's called a no till cedar that my dad has. I think with a drill, I would have probably had a lot more luck. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Actual, actual drill. How big are the seeds? I, I know you make fun of the drills and say that it's basically controlled spillage. That's what it is. Well, I ain't making fun of it. That's just what it is. Well, no, that no-till cedar, like, it, that was is it what it is. Like, oh, okay. like, it just literally, like, it has a box where it just drops it out. Yeah. And then you've got um, basically uh, like a cultipacker wheel on the back that That's right. tries to get yep. you some good seed soil contact and it just if you had which of course it was referred to as a no-till cedar yeah if you tilled it up it would probably work yeah, good yeah if you tilled up in front of it but that was kind of defeating the purpose um see i just want how big is the seed like i'm imagining like if you were to well, use depending like on a, what you're doing putting down obviously but um the the sudex sorghum sedan grass um millet i mean you know what millet looks Millet's like pretty small yeah um they're, they're they're pretty similar yeah now a lot of the legume would be put down like peas i mean see you could drill that yeah you could drill that probably because i mean but, but it was labor intensive you know you're wanting to plant them usually maybe not quite this early like middle of may to middle of june yeah for warm seasons but i was trying to rotate where i would plant a, a warm season one again right about now maybe here in a few weeks um which of course You've got probably five or six weeks where it's ready to graze. I mean, it grows fast. I mean, it yeah. doesn't put down much root system because, again, it's it ain't here for a long time. Um, you know, kind of the whole focus of it is it throws most of its energy above the ground. Um, then you could graze it all summer long. Um, you know, rotationally, you pull them off of it, let it get regrowth, whatever. And then I try to come back in the fall and plant a winter annual. Yeah. And it's just, it was, I mean, maybe for somebody who was full-time, and a lot of people will plant those annuals and may not graze them, but they'll they'll use them for their hay crop. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was neat. I had fun with that. I, the forage side of things really intrigues me. Um, I'm kind of a nerd on that kind of stuff. Um, like I always say, especially in this part of the country, if you're if you're a cattleman, if you're grazing cattle anyway, you're not, you know, just backgrounding and in confinement or whatever. You're 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 more accurately described as a grass farmer than as a cattleman yeah like you're you're focused on growing good good forage and just using those animals to harvest it for you but um yeah we i i I am now i mean other than the annuals like crabgrass you know that comes back from seed every year we're we're pretty much all perennials um you know i've got some crimson clover same thing it's an annual yeah, we um, put it down on cover crop. Right, right. It's excellent cover crop. Uh, you know, like most of your legumes, um, I guess really, I guess maybe by definition, all your legumes, you know, put some nitrogen in the ground for you. Um, but I've actually got some pastures on my, my newest farm that um, have quite a bit of crimson clover. Hmm. And it, it it comes back, you know, it, it blooms, goes to seed. Yeah. You know, it, it, it comes back every year. So It's a pretty... I like crimson clover, man. It's pretty when you oh, yeah, have field solid. And I guess that. you know. I, I noticed like going down the interstate. I guess the state has used it, you know, and put it like in the in the medians and whatnot. Oh, really? Because you got it. Of course, it's only there. You know, only blooming for a short time. You know, yeah. Pretty much right now, and in fact, it's just about done. You know, yeah. It probably hit its peak a week or two ago, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's very pretty. Um, but yeah, it's a good question. I mean, there, there there's definitely a place for. For both the annuals and the perennials but the perennials just in terms of you know you, you don't have to get out there and plant them every year you know if you're if you're like me and you know you got the day job and so then getting my day job to align with then when the weather's cooperative which that's been my issue on the hay um i should have uh i think i should have cut hay on a sunday but <laughs> They say it was still a little wet because it rained on Saturday, but a buddy of mine cut some on Monday, which, of course, I didn't have that luxury. I was at work on Monday, but then he was able to let it sit until today and bail it. I was like, same thing with me. I, I would have had to have cut on Sunday because I would have had to have bailed yesterday. Cause Were you like the sad uh, sad guy looking out the window thinking about cutting hay when you were at work? Well, 
a little bit, and I was like, ah, maybe. Because I was a little bit worried because we, we had sunshine and a little wind the last few days. So like, should have been pretty good dry, but it's been cool. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if I could have got it dry enough. And then I was over at his house yesterday. I actually got a bull from him, and uh, they had a bunch of hay on the ground. I was like, ah. Oh. I was like, I was just talking about how I, I wished, yeah, I probably could have gone ahead and cut it. Now, they did run a tether over there once, and I think they were going to run a tether over it again. I think. Um, just hmm. to be sure they got it good and dry because – Again, it just hadn't been that hot. Um, and I wouldn't have had that luxury because, uh, one, I don't have that much time. And, uh, yeah, two, I don't have a tether. So. <laughs> um, well, I bet there's one you could borrow. Yeah, I, I, I had to borrow one last year because I had some that was not – it was not well, – it was late in the fall, kind of same thing. The days were getting shorter. Yeah. wasn't quite as warm. Talked to us how he was going to get dry, and it just clearly was not going to before we had another rain. And so, uh, yeah, I'd call dad, borrow the tater, see if I could borrow it. And then it was, it was even better than that. Like, it's like, I need to borrow it. And, um, I need you to run it for me <laughs> because, <laughs> because I, again, I was at work. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it was a good question. Um, and I enjoy, I, I enjoy talking forages, but, uh, yeah, definitely a place for both. And it depends on your setup. You know, maybe you've got some ground that's, you know, really, you know, ideal for getting in there with equipment and, and especially if you've already got the equipment. Um, yeah, the annuals can offer the benefit of they, they grow, you know, typically a lot faster than your perennials do. Yeah. Um, give you a, a lot, a lot more product. But we messed around with teff. I guess I left that one out. That was something I had never heard of until basically the year I planted it, but teff grass. Yeah. Um, I actually had pretty good luck with it. Um, my, Sudex we did good with one year. Um, millet we didn't do as good with, but it was, I, I think it was more my mistakes than the millet itself. But, yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, man, we always appreciate the questions. That's what we've got. Got a couple couple here. One, uh, I will probably save one of these for the next one. This one is one that comes from Casey. And uh, we'll see. I think I think we'll have time diving in this one. Casey, he writes, hey, guys, I had a question for you. What's your thoughts on old and used implements? When is it time to replace worn out stuff? Or is it better to sink the money into it and repair it to like new condition? Also, what is your deciding factor on when time to upgrade to larger implements? A little history on us. The wife and I started out with a $2,500 investment into buying a retired guy out of his small square hay operation. And that was everything we needed to get started except for a tractor that we already had. But the equipment was from the 70s, small and in rough shape. Took some work to get it all running. Fast forward a few years and getting more ground. We started upgrading to newer, well-used, higher capacity equipment. It did the job, it was worn out, and was to the point it was going to cost more than the equipment was worth to repair it. I am a wrench by trade, so all work would have been done by us and not the dealer. We then decided to sell and trade it off throughout the years, and today we are running equipment that we had purchased new. Been in the hay business now going on 10 years up in northern Indiana. Casey, man, appreciate that. That's And that's awesome to hear the, how your, your operation's continuing to grow. Um, man, I tell you, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on it, and then let Bobby Lee share his on there uh, first. So what's your thoughts on old and used implements? Man, I mean... I have mixed feelings on it. Um, when and uh, the way, when is it time to replace worn out stuff, or is it better to sink the money into it and repair it? All right. Now I come from the row crop side. You'll be able to talk a little better on the hay side. Um, on the row crop side of things, for me, especially, you know, if if I'm working. If I was row cropping 200 acres, and this is kind of a side thing that I do. Uh, to make a little extra cash, then I would probably keep sinking the money into it and just repairing it. Uh, That's repairing it is what I would do. I'd be like, you know, I'm working 200 acres. I can repair this thing. I can, it'll carry me through the seasons. Like I I don't have a ton of disposable income with it, working that kind of ground. So that's kind of the way I'd look at it there. Now for myself, I mean, it's all I do, a full-time row crop farm. So I've grown my operation to a sizable amount for me. And so 
I kind of have learned throughout the years that uh, you need to be efficient. And I've got a, I've got some buddies that run some old stuff. Like I got a buddy that he runs an ancient sprayer and an ancient combine, and he probably he spends pretty much every year he spends more on his combine than what the combine itself is worth. And here's the thing I think about, like when it's time to plant, when it's time to spray and when it's time to harvest, it's always a hurry. Like it just never fails. Time is always the enemy. And, uh, the quickest killer to your efficiency is a breakdown. And so for me, if I can get in there, I run up. I've got a fairly new planter, and I actually went through it this year. I put new openers, new closers, replaced three hydraulic hoses that looked bad. Like it's pretty well fresh going into the season. My combine is a fairly new combine with pretty low hours on it. And I'll before we get into harvest, I'll go through it and replace anything that looks questionable. I just upgraded sprayers to a sprayer that's got a lot less hours than what I had on it. And I do all this because, again, when it's time to plant, I don't need to be broke down. Like, I can't miss, sometimes you have, like today, I wanted to finish my corn because we have freaking 13 days of rain coming. So I could not afford for my planter to be broke down today. And it did great. I powered through the day. It did, ran good. I finished the corn, and now I'm ready for the rain. But uh, so as your operation grows, and that's what you, the next thing he says, also, what is your deciding factor on when time to upgrade? I think you'll kind of know. You'll just kind of know as you grow, if you find yourself slowed down by breakdowns. I mean, I had a, my old combine. It was broke down for four days. Uh, during harvest one year and like literally you're like going out there and just like you know the fact that it's down for four days I mean that's I can cover a lot of acres in four days time and so thinking about my buddy like here's a comparison my my other buddy we work pretty similar amount of acres I work probably just a little bit more and he can cut beans at two and a half miles per hour with a 20 foot header and i can cut beans at six miles per hour with a 35 foot header so it's like i mean and that that's huge and you can you know somebody hearing that might be like man these guys they just all they want to do is just you know they just want to do as fast as they possibly can get out of the field but it's you know the quicker you get it out the better the quality of the grain so it's it's all about speed now in terms of hay you know i know When it comes to a rake, you can get by with a pretty old rake as long as you keep them keep it greased up. Well, it's funny you you mentioned rake because rake is probably because my hay operation, like I just mentioned, we don't have a tether. I mean, obviously, I have to have the tractors. Just send Willis out there with a rake and get him to flip it over. Well, and and rakes, some of them I was actually looking at them online. They have gotten a lot fancier if you want to, but. um, Basically, I've got a disc mower, I've got a rake, and I've got a baler, which, of course, he mentioned he's a wrench by trade. Well, that's a big freaking deal right there. Oh, I, that's a good leg up. Oh, yeah. Like, I'd, I'd certainly, at least I feel like, I can't say because I'm, I'm not. That's probably where I'm the most efficient. Um, you always say, I'm obviously, the animal husbandry and health is probably my right in my wheelhouse, and then I'm pretty good at, like, maintenance stuff around the farm you know the fencing hanging gates that kind of stuff um you know uh you know we already just touched like the agronomy and growing grass i feel like i'm pretty good there but when it comes to like being a mechanic that's probably where i, I lack the most and i've gotten a whole lot better at it but yeah if, if if something completely breaks down on one of my pieces of equipment no, i'm calling somebody or taking it somewhere you know it's and so i I can't, I, I, and two, especially with it being a side gig, which, well, like he said, it's, it's obviously sounds like a side gig for him, you know, being mechanicans, his main job. Well, and like, if I had cut that hay on Sunday, I could, and I was bailing it yesterday, I could not have afforded to have had a breakdown because a breakdown, you know, it was anything more than just, you know, an hour or two fix Yeah, would have meant 
I wouldn't have got it bailed yesterday and I would have needed to bail it today. Well, today I was back at my day job that is what really pays my bills. <laughs> yeah. And then it's raining tonight and it's going to rain for 13 days. So I would have been, I mean, over my head in shit Creek, you know, yeah. it, it, without any kind of paddle had I broken down yesterday. And so I've, and, and when I bought my baler a year ago, I did not intend on buying a baler near as new as what I bought, but I feel like I got a pretty good deal on it. Found it locally. It just worked out because I was looking at buying one that was about half worn out. Yeah. Um, and in hindsight, I've, one of the ways I've justified spending as much as I did was like, hey, I don't know enough about working on one of these things <laughs> to be working on one. Yeah. And so it, to, to know that when I go to the field with that baler that, I mean, nothing's ever 100%, but odds of me having a real, you know, catastrophic issue are relatively low. Um as long as I don't do something stupid. Well, I, you know, I could tell you, I have had the, I mean, my first planter, it was, it was pretty old when I bought it. I ran it for several years. And, uh, now one of the things the, it had some electronics on it and they had started to give me issues and anything. Now you're going to start running, unless you buy something that's 20 years old, it's going to have a fair amount of electronics on it. I mean, you know, aside from like a rake or tether, but like you get into the balers and stuff, some of that, they're going to have quite a bit of electronics on them now. Like, man, you're yeah. just running into a lot of headache. Well, it, it, that's what, well, the first thing is like, it depends on what you're buying. There's some things like, yeah, there's just not that much to go wrong. And so you go look at it as long as it's not just worn, slap out and then weld it all over. Yeah. Like hey, high rake's probably a pretty good example. Like, yeah, I mean. You got some hydraulics. And you can replace the bearings. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah, like like there's there's not, like, which a rake is not super expensive anyway. I mean, yeah. again, you can you can get into some of the really fancier, newer ones that, yeah. But, um, yeah, there's not that much to go wrong with something like that. You know, certainly as compared to, like, a combine or. Well, see, and that's what I was going to say. Like, it's when you get into the row crop stuff, the part, the problem you run into is there's a lot of moving parts. Like, yeah. like the combine, the combine is absolutely something that you can run too long. Because I was running into that. I mean, again, I, I mean, and it, you find yourself in a difficult position because you grow to a point like where I'm at right now. I have a lot of equipment notes right now because I've grown a pretty darn good bit in a pretty short amount of time. So, I, I mean, I've got quite a bit of equipment paid for, but the bad thing in the row crop world, about the time you get the stuff paid for, you got to trade it off because it's started to get worn out. And, like, you can replace things with, like, a planter, you know, you, I mean, hell, I mean, there's a lot of guys. We've had an episode before, combine versus planter, and that's like a heated debate, like which one is more important. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, the planter, because that's where it all starts, and so, man, I mean, you can rebuild, but the electronic stuff is what will get you. And uh, on a combine, there's just there's just too many moving parts. I mean, yeah, uh, it well, is. I guess it comes down to it. Yeah, there, there's some things you don't want to buy used or not. A baler, I would not want to buy a wore out baler because, um, like I said, you you're going like. Dad and I have talked about this one because they've had that round baler for longer than any round baler they've ever had, just about. And he was like, we really, if we're going to just keep doing this, we really need to get rid of that baler. And he was like, because it's just a matter of time before we have something bad happen to it. He was like, we've kept it longer than we ever have. And so, you know, a baler, but yeah, it, you know, the simple stuff. But I feel like you'll kind of, with row crop for me, it's kind of it kind of let me know. All right, what is slowing me down? If I find myself slowed down by this or that, like my sprayer that I had, it was, I mean, it was wore out. Like it was just wore out. And I was fighting that thing and having a lot of issues with it. And I knew I had to do everything humanly possible to get out of that sprayer. So I feel like you'll kind of have some signs there if you evaluate like, all right, what's, what's slowing me down? Or if I get this thing, it's going to increase my efficiency to where I can pick up more. That's kind of the weight way I would evaluate it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, appreciate the question, man. And, 
again, please go to talkdirtpodcast.com and uh, go to a contact page. You can submit your questions on there. You can ask us on YouTube, Instagram, anywhere. The links will be in the description for the episode and send us your stuff on there. But uh, that we got another question, but we'll get it next week. But we got to talk about our, our show. Yeah, man, we, we, we can't let bury the Oh, lead, you know, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't get it because, dude, we got some exciting, exciting information. Yeah, well, and, and a lot, I feel like a lot happened on this week's show, um, which I, I guess last week when we recorded, I still didn't even watch last week's. But you did, so you are all caught up. I, I kind of knew what happened, which I'm trying to even remember. Oh, you know, I, I was, Cassidy Joe had about the, I, I would have lost my house betting how well she went out. I told you, I told you. Which, he did it right, and I don't know that Alan meant to do this or not, but she broke it off more or less yeah. rather than him. Yeah. And I I was never a player. I, I was never like the dude who like picked up all the chicks <laughs> or anything like that. But I always said, like, go back to my college days, like talking to my buddies, like it's easier to pick up chicks than it is to break up with them. Yeah. Like, like I was that dude. I guess I was just a chicken shit when it came to breaking it off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so I, I, I felt like I kind of developed a pretty good technique of what Alan did, which again, I don't know that he did it on purpose or not, where I would kind of get them to break up with me. And be well, like, you did oh, better yeah. than I did. Like, yeah, it'd be there. Because, oh, God dang, I remember breaking up with some girls. And it's like, oh, my God, like, baby, uh, it, this is not that. I like, dumped like, a I'm, chick I'm, on Valentine's I'm Day. I'm not that great of a catch. Oh, damn, dude, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I can still remember because she was like, are you dumping me on valentine's day and i was just like i guess i am yeah yep, i am <laughs> well i felt bad now that i think about it i almost feel bad about it it had been sure as shit a hell of a lot better of me to have just been up front and be like yeah i don't think it's gonna work out but instead and just I, dump I, them on valentine's day well i don't know if i'd do that but instead i would just kind of be a dick for a couple of weeks and they'd break up with me and, and they'd be like yeah this guy yeah we'll see all right well or, or just you know yeah and and be like, well, you broke up with me then. And All right, well then we're here. We, this is what a question but, but yeah, we need that answered. Was, so Cassidy went out. Well, hold on, we, we, well. we need this answered then. Who is who's whose route was better? Bobby Lee's kind of the slow burn, being a dick, and then kind of kind of giving them the cold shoulder, and then they would dump him or mine, where it was just like, yeah, we're just done. You know, I was just I just kind of took the <laughs> like ripped the band yeah, just the quick cut, like, yeah, I'm just not that into you. And just cut it off. Which Dude, one you couldn't have waited one more day. I know. I, I guess I mean Had you hindsight, already bought her something? No. No, I didn't get her anything. <laughs> oh shit. No. So yeah, you you had to go ahead and break up with her, otherwise she would have broken up with yeah. you. Yeah. Well, she was kind of like Cassidy Joe. She kind of reminds me a little bit of her. Uh, Eric, just for some context, how long had you been dating this girl? Uh, a few months. Okay, so it was, you know, it wasn't like you started dating her. Oh, it wasn't like a week long or two yeah. weeks. Yeah, we've been together for a little while, but she just, she was just a little overwhelming for me. And I yeah. just, I just kind of had reached my point where I was like, ah, and I, I, but, but I, I guess you knew you were going to do it because you hadn't even bought her anything for Valentine's Day. Yeah, I don't even remember if I ever planned on getting her anything. I don't remember, but I, I will tell you this. It did prove a theory. Now, and I, look, I'm, I am nice to, I try to be nice to everybody. This is going to make me sound so mean. And uh, I I get along with everyone. Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm a pretty nice guy. And again, you got to cut me some slack here. This was back when I was a teenager. But um, I did prove a theory. You know, what, they, what is it, guys or chicks like uh, like assholes? You know, oh. That was always what you heard. So, so this same chick. It's definitely like that until they get to at least their mid twenties. Yeah, well, it, it it is true. So, uh, man, in high school, I I like I was actually I tried dating like three girls at one time, and they were all on the cheerleading team and together, which Damn. was like dangerous for me. Uh, I should have known because I had one of them. She straight up said, "I know that you're also trying to talk to like so and so and so and so," and I was just like. Again, I was just well, like... But I mean, at that point, like, it's super casual. Like, what does it matter? Like, yeah. Well, and that's kind of how I played it sure off. sure as hell ain't married. Like, what? That, and that's kind of how I played it off. And it worked in my favor. But, so this chick that I dumped on Valentine's Day, dumped her on Valentine's Day, didn't talk to her again for, like, two months. 
And we're at this, it's a rain across tour, me and some buddies. And I see a chick and she reminds me of this other girl. And I was like, I'm just going to send her a text. And so I just sent her a text and I was like, Hey, how are you? And she said, um, I'm not talking to you. And I was like, all right, it's been great to catch up. And like, that, that's all I said. And dude, a week later, I, I never texted her again. A week later, I got a text from her and it was like, Hey, and she was trying to talk. And so it proved, I was like, man, yeah. it's true. But I, that's a past girlfriend. That's not who I married. I was not a butthole to my wife. Um, not how I got her, but anyways, yeah, I was kind of ruthless then, but, um, I don't know, man. I like this was a good episode. Like, yeah, this week's it was, which hell let's, let's go ahead and like with Landon, man. I was like, Oh my God. Like it was a, the bomb. Uh, Devon. No, La- Landon. Oh, about his dad. Yeah. It was like two minutes left in the episode. And they're like, we got some sad news about Landon. They're like, yeah, his dad died. He's like, I was like, are they just in the episode like that? Was, and I was like, I, when I watched this, like, they must not have been that close or something. Well, part of me thought that, or but and then I was like, well, you know, they're recording, you know, and it's, you know, he's not there like stuck on his farm. Like, surely he's going, like, yeah, I don't, I don't know that he can give any context, which I mean, hell, it's his private business anyway, but it's like, pretty sure if my dad died while I was on a TV show, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm going to well, have to leave well, the show. And I was like cleaning the kitchen and cause I was watching it like right before I came over here. Yeah. So is, is he done with the show? Like, like, Mm-mm. no, okay. he's still on the show. Okay. Yeah. That, I no, that's know. what I'm saying. That's what, like, if it had been me, I'd been like, guys, I'm, I'm going to have to leave the show. Well, yeah, that's where I, yeah, you got all kinds of questions, which again, it's his private business. I mean, he, yeah, I, it's like, you know, was his dad, you know, like on the ranch with him, you know, did, it almost sounded like his dad might have been fighting being. I, I mean, again, I was kind of just reading into it. I don't know if his dad had been sick and then it got him, but yeah, it, it was definitely not much explanation there. And right, um, which I was, and, and I feel bad because I was already, you know, sitting there thinking, "What are we gonna talk about tonight?" Like, he's the least interesting guy with the least interesting girls. Like, I don't even know who his other girl is. Yeah. No. which for those of you not watching you know what are you doing with your life number one that's but, right uh, that's right they, they're all narrowed down to two chicks and they've all gone to do a home visit at with the, one at of the girls so you know met their family and like he went and visited with the girl that lives in florida and i was like i don't even i can't even think of who the other one like who's his other his i can't hardly think of any of them's name that's with him yeah, yeah. i, I I mean, yeah, sorry, Landon, but like, like I said, I'm not as yeah. invested in him. Well, and, and like the girl that like he did the in home with, it's like, I don't know, all along she was his first like solo date, but I was like, I just don't see this. Like, this doesn't seem like compatible. Fit She's got at like all. pink hair, or blue in her hair, and yeah. well, and I knew she had a kid because that's kind of been a thing all along. I guess she may be the only girl on the show that's got a kid, or at least that they've openly talked about. I think so. And like you know, I'm expecting like it's like. A, four or five year old kid at the most hell this kid's damn near old enough to be on the show <laughs> like well when they met her and i mean yeah, yeah she's like 12 you know yeah. she's not that old but i well how would, but i was just like oh my god like and how is she gonna move right and, and that's where i'm just like Eesh, like this i don't know the other kind of takeaway i had and this was pretty much true of all the dudes because like again they've all gone to the hometown of one of their final two girls met with her family all the families, which obviously they haven't seen the show, like they probably talked to their daughter or sister or whatever and, and know a little bit, but like the guys have had no real chance to do anything intimate. Like they, they have, they've had, in most cases, a single solo date with this girl, like one date. Yeah. I know what and you're like, about to talk about. Well, and they're like, you know, have you told her you love her yet? Like, yeah. God. Are you shitting me? Like, I've still got four girls living in my house until like two days ago. Like, like I've been on one actual date with this girl. I did like Landon handled that one pretty well. I thought he did too. He's like, he I was, will tell her before I tell you. Yeah. But I just kept thinking about that. I was like, how long had I dated my wife before I told her I loved her? Like, cause I, again, I don't know the exact timeline of the show, but I assume it's probably been a couple of months at this point. I think it's only so been he, a month. Okay. So, Whatever. You've only known these girls for a month or two. And again, you've been juggling multiple women. Yeah. yeah. And you've been on like one 
date one on one with them. The rest of the time, you're like hanging out with them and a bunch of other people. They asked uh, Hunter, you know, that Hunt, the Sydney chick, her mom asked him, like, do you love her? And he was like, oh, yeah. Well, to me, I was like, I would almost be more appalled if he was like, yeah, I love her. And I'd be like, <laughs> how could you even know? I mean, I guess there's love at first sight and all that, but I was just like, whoa, like, and kind of all of them. I guess Ryan's, his, that went pretty well. But I think Al, Alan's, Alan's went, the smoothest dude, man. Uh, like, I, I got to retract our original state. Like, the very first episode we talked oh, yeah, about, we're, we're, like, it, we're like, man, I just, he's not real smooth. Dude, Alan. Well, it, it's in the whole setup. I mean, it's so far. I mean, it's it's classic reality TV, and that it couldn't be further from reality. Like, yeah, here's these eight chicks. Go ahead and pick five of them. They're gonna all move in with you, and you'll date them all for the next month and decide who you <laughs> will spend the rest of your life with. Like, yeah, it couldn't be further from. So, like, yeah, I couldn't even imagine how awkward I would probably be. But, oh, dude, it can't, could. But I, yeah, his visit with Kelsey's family went. Dude, he aced it, man. Like he and couldn't her, have gone any better. Him and the dad were like best friends by the time we were leaving. Yeah. Like the dad was like, I'm coming to ride horses. Well, and like her family, like. They seemed real Southern, yeah, too. Yeah, like in there, I think they were Georgia. in Georgia. Yeah. And so it was kind of like, okay, yeah. You know, they, they were, it wasn't going to be a total culture shock for her. The other chick is in California. Well, we'll, we'll she'll get her in home, which. Logan found her on social media, <laughs> and by golly, because she's very modestly dressed always, like on the yeah, TV. Yeah, I tell you, I was like, does surprised. Does nothing to to catch your attention from looks. Like she's not unattractive at all. Yeah, but does nothing. And I was just network television. They're Certainly not running around and like surprised here. But golly, on on her Instagram, she's some, not particularly that modest. Well, I guess she's a model. I mean. <sighs> I mean, I, who knows I with know. social media, like nowadays, you can, I guess, all you gotta do is claim you're an Instagram model, Instagram model, but no, like, yeah, I mean, I. She's in a pretty much a birthday <laughs> suit. Well, um, she's in, it's lingerie, like photo shoots, like on horses, not like. Well, it's a thong. She ain't got nothing on up top. Yeah, but it's it's Instagram. There's no nudity. I mean. Yeah. Her back is to you, but yeah, you see yeah. some side boob. Yeah, she she is. Um, so are you team her? What is her name? Rebecca? I mean, every time I like, if if I look at those pictures, I, because <laughs> I, but man, you're right. Just from like a compatibility, like, I mean, obviously Alan's from Middle Tennessee, Kelsey's from Georgia. You know, the the the, the culture, you know, that she was raised in versus him is exactly the same. I mean, yeah, practically speaking. Well, I mean, he even said that he said we're we're cut from the same cloth. You know, yeah. our families are maybe a little different color pattern, but it's the same material. Yeah, Rebecca's from California, which who knows? I mean, California's a big ag state. There's a lot of I mean, she's rural a horse trainer of California, but still, it's like, and I've never set foot in California, but you know, y'all think of it as California. Yeah, you know, you know, a bunch well, of, I man, I don't know. Like, I still think yes, the there are some pretty spicy pictures of Rebecca, but man, I still think Kelsey is better than than Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. Because when when we were talking about the picture, I said if Kelsey was photographed in the same way, there'd be no comparison. Yeah. No, I, I, I'll have to disagree with that. I, I think, you don't think so? No. Nah. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to get myself in trouble <laughs> <laughs> on air, but uh, no, nah, I mean she. Re- Rebecca's got she, she built for speed. Oh, she is. I mean that, but. I thought Kelsey looked pretty good yeah. in this episode. But it, um, I don't know, like Ryan, which I have felt all along, ever since his mom said she liked Sarah H. Because both his final two girls were named Sarah. Yeah. Um, now, the one he just did the in-home I with, think the tides are turning. Yeah, I was I saying Sarah I, H. I don't, I still think it's going to be her. She's getting the last visit. Like, I don't think there's much drama there. I think we all look believe hunter is going to end up with megan like from the moment she stepped back on the show after yeah also having to leave for a family well know, and i think emergency. i feel like they somewhat at least from my perspective kind of solidified that talking about the fact that 
Hell, Sydney ain't but 22 years old. Well, and I got to talk about kids. And, and yeah. she was like, I'm not ready. To, she's going to, she's like, I don't know if he's going to want me to sell Ashley out. Landon's girl's got a daughter nearly that old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my last joke on that. But, it, <laughs> um, but yeah, but now with Megan, they did, in which I wondered, I was like, did they throw that in there just to throw you off a little bit when she was talking about how the farm pretty much she's planning on moving back to her great grandmother's farm. Yeah. And I was like, is he going to be willing to leave? Which that could, I mean, that could be a total deal breaker for him because he could be like, hell no, like I'm living right here in Georgia. Um, so yeah, but, but yeah, part of me wondered like, did they just throw that in there to see if they could throw us off? But yeah, I feel like Hunter's, it's going to be Megan. Ryan, I still think it'll be Sarah H. Um, Alan, I don't know. We'll see. And then, you know, Landon, I don't even know who the other girl is. Um, yeah, so, I don't either. I did uh, feel bad when Hunter sent Devon home, man. Yeah, she, which she was really young, too. Like, was she? I think she was, like, in her early 20s. I okay. Get, she just, yeah, I mean, it seemed like. Felt bad for her. I, I've always felt like, you know, a 35-year-old man marrying a 28-year-old woman is not that ridiculous, but. Marrying a 22-year-old is pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, the, the, that, yeah, the difference, which was that, 35 to 28, seven years, the difference between a 22-year-old woman and a 29-year-old woman is light years. Like, yeah. Like, there's, I feel like most people, and everybody's different, but you do an enormous amount of growing up there through your 20s. Like, it, at 22, you're still, in a lot of ways, a kid. Yeah. You know, and but by, by your late 20s, like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Th that one didn't. Yeah, she was a nice girl. I, th I think she was just on pure looks, maybe the most attractive one he had. Yeah. But yeah, it was just. Yeah, you know, I, I go, that's what I'm like. Especially because I think he said he's 31. Like, as a 31-year-old, and I, you know, I, I don't know her exact age. Say she was 22. Um, I thought she was like 28. I, don't, I think she's pretty young. We'll look her up. But anyway, it, uh, that's like, I would be nervous, which I guess they don't have to marry anyone, but like, yeah, you know, I was like, we're, that'd be one to be like, yeah, we're going to have to date for two or that'd three be... years before I'm comfortable settling down with somebody that yeah, at that point in their life. Cause I feel like, yeah, there's a, well, see, got a lot of growing up to do. I'm going to feel bad for Kelsey if she don't get it. Cause the whole episode, Kelsey's like, I just want to be with him so badly. And like, I'm like, man, man, I'm, my heart's going to be broken if he don't pick Kelsey. But I did see in a little sneak peek, Rebecca, I guess, says something to him like uh, at talking about how he acts differently with Kelsey than he does with her. <laughs> and I mean, look, you know, Kelsey is a ho or uh, Rebecca's a horse trainer and all that. So they click there. But I don't know, man, I, I do. I think there's still a little more fire there. Between Allen and Devon's her. 26. Okay, see, so that's not that bad. We were kind of in the middle. Uh, yeah, like, which it's, you're always going to have the recency bias. Like, he is, as the episode ended, he's still on the home visit with, with Kelsey. And so, she she's probably leading right now. But, obviously, he's about to go to California, which, hell, that might be the worst thing that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> <to Rebecca>. yeah. <laughs> a, yeah. A country boy from Tennessee going to California. She there. might take him bareback riding, though. And that might might get him in there. Yeah. Yeah. If they go riding on the beach with her wearing a, <laughs> some thong underwear and nothing else. Yeah. That, that might. Kelsey might have her work cut out for. That's, uh, I've always said, most powerful weapon on the face of the earth that history has ever known. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot can be overcome right there. But, yeah, you, you got to – if I was betting right now, I'd say I'm going to be Kelsey. Ryan will be Sarah H. Does Hunter, Sarah Hunter v, be Megan. Does Sarah V kind of have a little bit of a gangster – she, like, kind of talks a little ghetto to me. She kind of like – Yeah, yeah. I mean, and neither of her parents do. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, you're, you're right. Like, I, I was a little surprised. Like, well, her parents are – I mean, I'll yeah. be honest with you. I almost thought one of her parents might be black. Well, you know, nowadays it's with a whole mixed race and, and like, look, I don't care. Like, I, I'm continually amazed, like, when people, and not even just are identifying as black, like, like there's several people that, like, I'm like, whoa, that person's black. And I'm like, yeah, he's black. And I'm like, oh, I just, he was a little tanner than me, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
But yeah, she did, you know, she's, I guess, darker skin, you know. Well, but she's, she's well tanned. She, yeah. But, but like, like, yeah, you can look at her, you're like, yeah, you're like, I don't know, maybe one of I her I think parents. she had a do-rag on on one of the episodes. Like, yeah, I'm not yeah. even being funny. Like, I'm pretty sure she had a right, do-rag well, on. And, yeah, you know, just as you see her, you're thinking, oh, you know, maybe one of her parents is Hispanic or, like, maybe like a Pacific Islander or, like, a little Polynesian <laughs> or something. And, like, no, they're, like, just basic white people. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. And maybe she's adopted. I don't know. Hell, but um, yeah. But y- you're right. I was a little surprised. Like, oh, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, and they both talked very white. Cause she kind of has a little well, little gangster in her chat. Yeah, and it like I say, it doesn't matter. Like I, I'm continually amazed. Like, but I man, regularly I, whenever I, I'm, I'm, and it may not even be somebody that I met, but like, um, I remember one example. James Franklin, who's the football coach at Penn State now, used to be at Vanderbilt, and so obviously played Tennessee all the time. I remember they were playing, uh, maybe been playing Mississippi State when Sylvester Croom was there, or whatever. They're like, "Oh, it's historic! It's the first time two black head coaches have faced off." And I was like, "What?" I was like, "He's black," you know. And it's just like, and then it comes down to the whole like, well, is he, you know, you, you know, good, well, Obama's a great example, like, like. Everybody claims his man's black. Well, I was like, well, he's he's half black. Well, right. I mean, and yeah, you know, we don't want to turn this into a whole race thing, but like, okay, you know, all right, you know, that's. I mean, yeah. I mean, at what point are you? I mean, Elizabeth consider- Warren's an Indian, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like you go, like, does that count? You know, I mean, uh, so, but yeah, you're you're right. I, when when her parents walked out, I was like, whoa, well, like that's not what I was picturing her parents to look like. But yeah. Anyway. Now. I'll- I, if he goes solely off a of look, Sarah H has it in the back. She's a good looking chick. Hold on. Sarah H. Well, I don't know. I think the other one, Sarah V, might be the better looking. Oh, one. man. See, I, I think see, the this, other is, one. this is where you're all wrong on Kelsey, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I, I am. I'm, I'm rooting for Sarah H and I'm rooting for Kelsey. Yeah. And Kelsey's just sweeter, man. She's just a sweet chick. Like, Rebecca's real quiet and reserved and. Like, well, I say she's real quiet and reserved. She's say, she's a little louder I've, than I realized. Yeah. Um, but from what we've seen on TV, she's a little. She's quiet. She's quiet. She's very modest. What would what, what Usher <laughs> say? A lady in the street, but a freaking bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it seems. Yeah. 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 Um, but man, yeah. Th- but I'm with you, man. A Megan. If Hunter don't pick Megan, I'll be shocked. If Allen, if he don't pick Kelsey, I'm still saying he's picking Kelsey. Ryan, I'm on. I, I, I guess I'll say Sarah H. Um, and Landon, uh, I don't even know the. Ch- yeah, yeah I don't. I don't even know who the other one is. So yeah. I, yeah. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a little bomb here for us. So, I made contact. Uh, we've mentioned on here we'd like to you know have a couple of guys on the show from or on from that show on this show. And we have made contact with two of them. And I mean, I, you know, want, very preliminary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, we have gotten two that said they would, they would do the show. Now I've, you know, my other show is, that I do uh, living fully loaded. It's a guest show. There's been quite a few times where I've had people that are like, yeah, man, I'll do the show. And they never do the show. So we don't count our eggs until they hatch. But we do have two that have said they would do the show. Now, one, it will be in June if it happens. Um, so, you know, I don't want y'all to be, like, looking for the next episode. And it's like, well, it ain't happened. Because I, I know everybody listening watches it. Yeah, y'all better be watching. <laughs> um, but I did. You told me two months ago that we'd be sitting here talking and breaking that show down every week. This all started with, like. A joke. Yeah, it was a joke. I had never even heard of Like, I don't watch TV. Like, yeah. When I watch TV, it's YouTube. Like, we certainly don't watch network TV. And, uh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> I told Scott, Scott Davis is the reason, because he was like, Logan, have you watched this? And I was like, no. And so me and you made fun of it. And then oh, yeah. we, you were like, well, we can't, we haven't watched it yet. So we were like, all right, we'll watch it. Well, I think the first episode I watched, because I sent you a picture of my TV when I was watching it. You I, did. I, I was like laughing about it. <laughs> yeah. And then it sucked us in. I told Scott today. In the group message, I said, did you ever watch any more of Farmer Wants a Wife? And he said, 
I said, because, man, I did, and I've now I've gotten sucked into it. It's pretty entertaining. He goes, no, I didn't, but shit, I guess I will. So, I, <laughs> <laughs> so he's going back to watch it. Yeah. So, um, but, yes, we do have two that are hopefully going to be coming on the show. Um, one of them actually be, sounds like an, he will be here in studio. Um, which that's, that's the goal. Yeah, that'll be pretty darn cool. And, uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. But I remind me to tell you something about that off air, uh, after we get done. But, um, yeah, that should I quit drinking it until you tell me? No, no, you're good. Yeah, I didn't, I only peed in it a little bit. Um, when I had, but hey, uh, hold that up for him too. May 16th, this comes out, uh, which we'll be back in here, but just to warn everybody. All right. If you can see this, I'll zoom in on it. All right. You can see. Right there, Bobby Lee is holding up. There you go. Only the Dead by Jack Carr. That is the newest novel in his series. I believe that is book number six. Bobby Lee is doing an excellent, like kind of like a Price is Right type uh, modeling. But that's his new book, and it comes out May 16th. And uh, you can pre-order it now. Jack is an awesome dude. I've had the luxury of having him on the podcast three times and i i had him on last week i've told y'all i'm gonna bring back living fully loaded so this not so actually this coming wednesday i'll drop that but may 16th that book comes out you can pre-order it now if you pre-order it i think you get a signed copy from him and um he said this is the most violent one yet but i'm just sitting here reading the back cover obviously if you're watching on youtube of course they've got like all the celebrities that have like you know, giving a, a quick review of it. Yep. And holy shit, like Chuck Norris. Oh, has Chuck Norris got one on there? Like that's all you need to know. Oh, Chuck Norris, quote, absolutely <laughs> intense. There you go. That lets if you that know. That doesn't. I mean, that's the ceiling deal right there. I mean, if only. I mean, the only way you could top that, and unfortunately, you can't because he's dead and gone. But john wayne i was uh, thinking you were gonna like, say like john, john wayne john wayne's maybe the only you know yeah you know more legit you know yeah actor you could get to but anyway yeah rest in peace well but. it uh like i said go pre-order that uh there go to his website just google jack carly the dead you can pre-order but i'm i'm almost certain you can get some signed copies but jack is awesome we need to support what he's doing uh chris pratt you know he's and they got the terminal list out. They are doing True Believer, and uh, I saw where they had gotten picked up, or or you had told me, or Jack also said that's the longest book he's ever wrote. So he said if you get into a fight with somebody and you need a weapon, you don't have one, but you have that book in your hand. He said you could use it to bludgeon to death somebody. Okay, so that is you, you uh, probably want to go for the hardback then. Yes, that one you want the hardcover, and uh, there you go, guys. Uh, you got the made in America. Well, I like you. You got two good options, which I know we've we've done Jack before. So I, I, do your other company. All right. Um. So we actually just opened this. Okay. I can see. I want to make sure I spell this right. Um. Yeah. I so can, I can see the box. So if you get it wrong, I can tell you. Okay. So. This is a company I got linked up with uh, through actually my marketer, but he was telling me about, and it's made in America, obviously, but it's called Axle Targets, A-X-L-E Targets. Heck, I should have brought one over here, but they're big targets. They're like that big. I can can hook us up. There you go. Bobby, he's going to also model the target, Um, but they're American-made targets. They're big targets. And uh, they've got all kinds. I'm looking on their website here. There is a Terminator one. Um, I thought that I had a Terminator one in the mix. All right, check that out. Like, that's even, it's like, I mean, that's actually nearly, that's like life size almost. Like, that's a, yeah. I mean, it could be a. It'd be like a midget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, like, I be, said it would be a midget. Yeah. I know I wasn't at the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be, yeah, but, but I mean, you can see it's got, it, I mean. You can know what you're shooting, like um, this. Very, target. very anatomically correct. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's. I mean, it's pretty awesome target, and it does have some little smaller targets up here. 
yeah, you it's got a square around the face. You can shoot them in the face. Um, but yeah. that's Axel American made, family owned. So, yep, and it's a pretty. I mean, I I think it's a relatively small company. So. A cool company to to support. And again, you go on their website, they have a bunch of different targets to choose from. Yeah, the the Terminator one is pretty pretty slick. Um, There's a clown. If you hate clowns, you can shoot them. Um, Yeah, see, there's the Terminator. It's just got the cool Terminator Terminator head. Terminator head. But, yeah, Axel Targets. Check them out, axeltargets.com. I'm looking at the box. But, uh I was going to give another shout out to a, to a previous company we've highlighted. All right. I've never seen this before. Um, but again, at, at risk of losing my man card, um, Buff City Soap. Yeah. I was running in there the other day. And on the door, because I, I kind of pay attention to this stuff because I mean, make no secret. Sometimes I'm concealed carry and sometimes I'm not. It's the beauty of concealed carry. You don't know. But they had a, a little sticker on the door, tiny. And it was a handgun. Uh, and, of course, typically I'm expecting it to be like. Not no, permitted. Yeah, yeah, not permitted here. No, it, it it was a green outline around it. little hang. It was a little sticker, you know, maybe two inches by two inches. It said um, concealed carry allowed here or something to that effect. And I thought, I mean, <laughs> I, I just wanted to go in there and just hand them my wallet. And just yeah. like, just whatever I can buy. Like. But, but, and of course, I didn't make a big deal of it. I just went in there and bought what I needed to buy and got out. But I was like, that's the first time I've ever seen that. And I'm sure there are other businesses around that have that. Well, see, now you're going to drive me nuts because I just saw it on another business, but I can't remember what it was now. Well, I, and, and like this is, I mean, it's a, again, I joked about losing my man card. Like it's not like a gun store somewhere where you're like, hell yeah, everybody in here's carrying, you know, or anything like yeah. super no, massive. It's a so- a, soap store. It's yeah. literally like you go in there and you, you, you know, like uh, you were the only male. I, I almost certainly was the only male in that place. Like, yes, yeah, it's just not a place which I it, it, sit here, joke about it. The people that probably should be concealed carrying are female. Yeah. yeah you know, no, I, mean, I don't disagree yeah, I mean, with that. Hey, yeah. it, it, that's the, what's, what's the saying? Uh, God made all men. Sam Colt made them equal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's a great equalizer when it comes to, uh, you know, I know we're not supposed to admit there's a difference you know, between the genders, but uh, there definitely yeah, is. Yeah, females. Yeah. So anyway, got off on a tangent there, but yeah, I was like, hell yes, and I was like, I'm gonna have to mention that. Yep. Um, well, that just makes you want to support them even more. I, exactly. I mean, I was already going in there, but um, but yeah. Um, anyway. Well, yeah. there you go, guys. Um, yeah, I can't remember what the other place I went. I saw the green one the other day. I don't remember where though. Um, all right, guys, uh, we appreciate you tuning in. And, uh, like I said, you'll just have to keep checking in when we verify for sure. You know, we'll, we'll let you know, we'll let you, we'll give some, some teasers on who's going to be coming on the show, but we want to let you guys know that the, the wheels are in motion. Yeah. We're, we're trying, to, trying to, to get some guests. Yep. So guys, appreciate y'all. Like I said, submit your questions, leave us a rating and review, hit that like button, hit subscribe. Share with your friends. We'll catch you next week. Talk to you next week.